he always went to bed early and wake up early in the morning. We always play a lot and we always get along good. He will come in my room, lay down beside me, play with me until he said, Mommy, go make my breakfast for me. Brothers always fight now and then, but it's just that and a few minutes after then we're good again. He dreamed to be a firefighter. So you must know he always at the fire station because we live next door. Yeah, he always over there with the men. And he also wanted to play football too, come could play. He's play for the school team, yeah. Normally when he play whether for the school or with the firemen, he always have a snack and he is a lover of banana chips. When I'm there, yeah, the banana chips and the water was on there. And because of that, I can't even eat banana chips because as I take up one, I remember Jason. At the time I was 15 and I was um, 18. I would just don't play basketball across the road and come over. And him say, I go up on the road and him take the bicycle and him never come back. Some shots was firing and Jason heard the shots and jump off the bicycle and run. Because up to normal when things are going up there, everybody try to come out of the, the area. And because he ran, the police chase him, beat him and shoot him. I witnessed them here one time, two police in there, beat him and then the next one come on and say, where boy there? And then the mere explosion go off and that was it. That was essentially the cause of death, gunshot wound to the chest. There are other additional blunt force injuries on the body. Two on the forehead, the inner surface of the right thigh, right elbow. When I'm in the casket, you can see the bruise and I'm head and thing on the forehead. As well as a contusion on the right calf. It appears to me that he had been physically abused in the sense that he had some kicks and blows and uh, other uh, blunt injuries before he was finally shot in the chest. What I can say is noteworthy about this particular case is that uh, he was only 15 years old. This is probably one of the youngest ages that I've had to do an uh, observation for police killing. And um, when I called, they said I have to come home because Jason's sick. They did, they did not want to say what has happened to Jason. Next morning when I wake up, I think I just a dream or something. When I got here, the crowd I see at the gate, I know that something was wrong. Just looking at the amount of crowd at the gate, I figured that Jason died. Yeah. It's easy when the figures come out, you know, at the end of a month or the end of a year, and you have a figure of 152 people killed by the police. It's easy to ignore that or to be more accepting of that if you don't, in fact, know who these people were. Sometimes we talk about him day to day, you know. The type of person he was, jovial, helpful, you know, we were saying like, 
you know, if Jason was here, Jason would be doing this, Jason would be doing that. For Monica, her son is not a statistic. For eight years now, we are doing the memorial to keep the remembrance of Jason. We are preparing for it. So I wrote a letter this morning to the station to say if I can get the marching band to perform to the spot where they killed him. Nothing out in the greener. Observer. Part of the importance for her is to keep reminding people of that, that, you know, this is my son and this is what happened to him and I have not forgotten and I, I don't think that you ought to forget either. There is not a hair comb that we don't do it. We do it every single hair. If they're seeing his face every year, if the newspapers publish a picture of him, it brings it back into the consciousness of the country that this is a, a, a child who was killed and really there has been no justice for the family. There was nothing to prompt the death of this boy. And certainly through the criminal proceedings, there isn't a feeling of closure or justice. They, they should um, send them to prison, you know. You feel a little better, but they send them out, set, set them free. So they're going to do it again to somebody else's child. like watching the news at times and I see mother crying for their son and calling out for police brutality and thing like that but you don't know the feelings until it reach you when it come to your doorstep that's the time you feel it when it happened to me I feel what those mother used to come and cry out police kill their son or their daughter or their loved one my mom she is a fighter. I don't know how to describe her, but I guess she could go fight in the war with Iraq and things. It never crossed my mind to give up and to sit back or anything like that. I don't know where she get it, the strength from to fight. I, I don't know, you know. I just go through and just do it for Jason because we missed him. So, you know, we try to fight, fight it to the end. Huh? 